I went to uh, India to help start up the Indian Institute of De uh, Technology in uh, New Delhi. It was supplied by, uh, well, the British taxpayer was, uh, was providing my salary and the uh, British industry was supplying most of the equipment and which was being set it up in a similar fashion to the way the Germans and the Russians and the United States had started up places in Karagpur and uh, Bombay and various other places beforehand. And that was very interesting. Um, but uh, we had a director who only knew one word, and that was no. And <laughs> so although we had the, the best students from uh, all over India and uh, we were able to recruit the best local staff, um, uh, it was a bit frustrating. We were not really able to make the progress that we'd like to have done. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a very reputable place, but uh, um, it was frustrating. So I was looking for a, a job again, and um, it happened that Peter Lancaster, who I'd, I'd recruited in Singapore years before, had had also left shortly I left Singapore shortly after I did, and had gone to Calgary. And um, my wife and his wife had kept in touch by mail. And so when I was feeling a bit frustrated, and it was just before the monsoon in India, <laughs> the temperature was getting up in the hundreds, and uh, and um, we got a got a letter from Edna Lancaster showing the kids playing in the snow in the, by Spray Lake <laughs> and uh, off offering a job and uh, Louise said take it <laughs> so so I moved on to uh, to Calgary and I've been there ever since near, nearly nearly 50 years now and um, in fact, um, I claim that my two greatest contributions to mathematics are uh, Peter Lancaster and Eric Milner, because uh, uh, Peter Lancaster, uh, he applied for a job in, um, in Singapore, and in those days it was the British Commonwealth of Universities and everything was operated in London and the, uh, the, the, the selection committee that, uh, were, uh, that might have appointed Peter Lancaster uh, consisted of pure mathematicians and uh, in fact in Davenport and uh, Heilbronn were two members of the committee, I know a number of theorists who I don't think they understood about vibrations of airplane wings and eigenvalues and things, which were what Peter Lancaster <laughs> was involved in. And uh, so they turned him down. But fortunately, as a second attempt, he, we, we recruited him. And so he'd moved on to Calgary and was, was able to get me a job in Calgary <laughs> in return. Uh, Eric Milner was another interesting case. I only discovered the complete story after after he died, actually. But uh, what it turned out that um, after he'd got his degree at King's College London, uh, he'd actually stayed on and done research with both uh, uh, Richard Rado and with Charles Coulson in, in both pure and applied mathematics, and. Um, was a, a very a very good mathematician, and um, but he was liable to for national service, and uh, he evidently tried to get into the navy, but when he went for his medical, he discovered that he was almost completely deaf in one ear. He didn't learn this, so that he got turned down on medical grounds. And he didn't want to, 
he didn't didn't want to go into the army and have to go and I don't know do square bashing and uh, cleaning out the washrooms and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, instead of doing that, doing that, and going into one of the branches of the services, you could uh, go out into what was then the the empire into uh, well, into one of the colonies, and if you took a job there instead, that you would do instead of national service. So he had gone out and was working for the Strait Stating Corporation, which was a, a tin smelting firm in Malaya. And um, uh, shortly after I got to Singapore, the, uh, Bobby Ho, who was in the geography department, said to me, so I'd like you to come round to dinner next Saturday. I want you to meet an old college friend of mine. And Bobby Ho and his wife, and uh, Eric Milner and Eric Milner's future wife had all been friends together at King's College London. So I, I met Eric Milner and, um, and I, the next, next morning I went round to Oppenheim's office and said, hey, there's a mathematician loose around here, we must get, get him. So we, we persuaded him to come and join the math department and uh, of course, he, he didn't look back, and uh, Erdős visited us, and uh, he, he worked quite a bit with Erdős, and, um, and uh, both, well, both Peter Lancaster and Eric Milner became, uh, well, uh, Eric went to Reading to work with radio again, and got, got his PhD then and should have got promotion. Uh, Rado was a very good mathematician, but he was a very poor head of department. He didn't really look after his staff. And um, Eric Milner was just an assistant lecturer. And um, I said, well, look, you know, that you should be get to getting some promotion. And, and um, uh, they did. There was some suggestion that he'd been put up for a readership, and uh, and um, but it was beginning a bit slow coming through. So I wrote to him and said, "Look, uh, if you you apply for a job here, like we can make you quite a good offer. You can go and wave that at the authorities at Reading and uh, see if your promotion doesn't come through." So we tried that. Well, of course, you mustn't make threats unless you're willing to carry them out. And um, so there was still no sign of readership. So he came for a year to Calgary. And at the end of the year, there was still no sign of it. So he stayed on. And uh, he was there until his unfortunate death from cancer and, uh, when he was still only in his early 60s. But he and uh, he and Peter Lancaster both became fellows of the Royal Canadian Fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, and um, obviously the best mathematicians that we've had in the in the department. And as I say, I think those are, those are my two biggest contributions to mathematics. Mm -hmm.